Nvidia, the gaming company that now is probably the AI company, and how I believe that their bet on AI might backfire in the coming few years. So Nvidia is a 1 trillion US dollar company, as we speak. These numbers are just a few days old, but even if we look at Yahoo Finance, we can see that they are basically there, 1 trillion US dollar. So they are really close to the biggest, biggest uh, companies on the planet. We're talking about Apple, we're talking about Microsoft, we're talking about Alphabet. So how will Nvidia justify this huge market cap? Well, to start with, they have 300 billion of US dollar in the market for automotive, another 300 billion in chip systems, and then 150 apiece for Nvidia AI Enterprises and Omniverse, which is basically your VR headsets and the, the assumption that somehow that will take off uh, a new kind of development and user base uh, which reaches 250 billion US dollar a year and then they have you know 100 billion US dollar which is a lot but comparatively it's not a whole bunch of money compared to 300 billion for automotive that they speak about and you know Nvidia being so called gaming company now they don't probably even care about that market in a sense at least it's the least of their problems in this scenario I'm speaking about how the company might be a bit overvalued and let's say that the bet on AI doesn't take off. Why should I think about it like that? Well, look at the gaming revenue over the past, let's say, eight quarters. And if you actually see that it's around two to three billion US dollar each quarter. Now, obviously, sometimes it's a bit more, sometimes it's a bit less, depending on the market situation. But I would say at two and a half billion is, is quite fair uh, average. Now. Going to 2022, which was a great, great year for gaming, they averaged at 10.7 billion US dollar for total gaming revenue. So 2022 was a really, really good year in terms of gaming. And if we assume that Nvidia will somehow double that number in revenue by 2026, so in three to four years times, that gives you around 20 billion US dollar in gaming revenue. And again, remember that in this scenario, we are looking at a situation where the bet on AI doesn't take off. So basically the AI situation is either through competition taking market share or actually just being a bit hyped and real, real assets being bought by big companies. So in that scenario, 20 billion US dollar in revenue roughly has to justify a company that is on the market for 1 trillion US dollar. And to be honest, you're not investing in the company just for the stock price to sit around at these levels. You're probably investing to, in, I don't know, in like four years to at least double your money in this kind of high risk companies with this kind of in in insanely high uh, amount of uh, stock price appropriation in uh, the last few years. So probably you bought the company for let's say a certain amount, you want double that money in four or five years. So we're talking like two trillion market cap potential in four years. That's the goal on a basis of a revenue at, I don't know, like 20 billion at best case scenario. Is that realistic? I don't know, to be honest, I don't know. I think that's a really, really tough, like the price to say it's ratio of that kind of number. So, I mean, having like 20 billion US dollar in revenue and having a market cap of one, uh, two trillion. Or in this sense, let's say today's number at 10, roughly 10 to 11 billion and the market cap sits already at 1 trillion. I mean, we're talking now, I don't know, price to sales ratio of 94 times. This is like, I mean, there's one thing called bubble that's like 20 to 30 times, but we're talking about like close to 100 times. And this is not the PE ratio, mind you, this is the price to sales ratio. So just to give you a historic example. Cisco at the time of uh, in the before the dot com crash, they had a market cap of just below six hundred billion US dollar, and their yearly revenue was around eighteen to nineteen billion. At the height of Cisco, they had a price to sales ratio of thirty one times. Now compare that to Nvidia. I mean, it's like almost an order of magnitude higher. So the risk involved in investing in Nvidia, if they don't hit those numbers in AI is really really big and just to give you a sense of uh, scale so this is the stock price of cisco and as you can see it's going up quite steadily and then in 99 like really really rocketing and then just straight going down after the dot-com crash and look at this so we are talking like i mean we're closing on three decades like three decades later and the stock price has still not recovered 
and this company Cisco which was the bubble of all times is still <laughs> still fairly valued compared to Nvidia which has like a price to sales ratio three times more than Cisco at, at any given time so yeah the, the risks are there and but again some people might say well we really really are confident in the AI picture of Nvidia sure but I'm speaking of the scenario where they don't actually fulfill their goals then as an investor you should really have a second thought and sit down and try to understand what you're actually getting involved in don't FOMO into a stock I mean there are other good options Intel even I believe Intel start to get really really nice price compared to Nvidia and even AMD and look at AMD's gaming revenue so this is a company that on the client side and the client is basically their uh, CPUs and their APUs for notebooks and desktops and the game is basically your PS5, your Xbox uh, as, and uh, your other bits and pieces, your uh, handholds and all this kind of stuff. And these two segments, as of latest quarter, had a revenue that sits around 2.7 billion US dollar. And the year before that, I mean, combined, they were like almost 4 billion US dollar revenue on those two parts, which are essentially gaming. And... If I recall, Nvidia never had those kind of numbers. I mean, as I mentioned, like they average roughly two and a half billion. So you could argue, like even AMD, if they are getting involved in this AI hype, either they are going to increase their stock price a lot or Nvidia is going to fall a lot. AMD's Trix Point APU could be another nail in the coffin of standalone GPUs. And standalone GPUs is basically 30 years. So three decades of Nvidia's revenue. This is where the company basically established itself based on standalone GPUs, discrete GPUs, your RTXs, your GTXs, your 780s, 980s, and all those kind of products. This is where Nvidia had their bread and butter for the past, I mean, for 99% of their time as a company. And this whole segment is being attacked by AMD through a much, much more smarter a solution in my opinion for some parts of the market not whole market but for some parts which is probably the majority of the market so going back where will APUs attack and where will this attack be felt so having a look at these kind of lineups for AMD Intel Nvidia through 2022 basically last year 2023 this year and onwards so you can see that AMD launched Rembrandt and Intel were still on the Iris XE which is not a very good product I mean it's okay but yeah it's not AMD is definitely leading there and Nvidia is sticking to their discrete GPU so basically their standalone GPUs and at the bottom I uh, mentioned like the best APUs which in 2022 was from AMD and under the name Rembrandt Rembrandt was at best case I mean um, yeah maybe not really but at best case the uh, 1050 to 1050 Ti, so which is really, really low end market, especially if you consider that those graphics cards were launched back in 2016 17 and they were already there low, yeah, at the low end of the market. Now, a year later, so basically this year, AMD launched Phoenix, Intel is going to launch Meteor Lake, which probably will surpass Phoenix by 20% or something around there, and Nvidia, of course, still using the discrete GPUs at different segments. You're like 4060s, 4060Ti's, 4070s, and then you know 4080s and 4090s and so on. So Nvidia doesn't have any, well they have their M MX line but it seems like that kind of product is gonna die off soon. So now Phoenix and Meteor Lake will raise the bar. So now we are talking like at the low end maybe just below 1060 and if Meteor Lake is looking good and if I mean the numbers are to be tr trusted we might even see something like just above 1060 between uh, 1070. So now, okay, again, those products were mid-end for uh, 2016. So very low end this kind of in 2023. But I, you can see that there's a huge development from year to year. Now, the interesting part is actually next year in 2024. And finally, we will have a really, really big APU from AMD actually battling out against the Apple as well with their M line of series. And Strix Point is a really interesting component. We will basically see a component that will fight against 4060 and 4070, which is mid to upper range 
in 2023 and probably 2024. So yeah, so that's where the attack will happen from AMD and also especially from Meteor Lake and Arrow Lake by Intel as well. And I just don't see how Nvidia will compete in the lower end and at some point in the mid end of the market. So why is the mid end of the market and the upper mid end of the market so important for Nvidia? This is the Steam hardware survey and you can see that at the top we have still the 1650 and 1060. And those two graphics units are basically 11% to 12% of the market still. And then you have the 3060, then 3060 laptop GPU, 2060, 1050i. And you can see it's all just 60s and 50s and some 70s here and there. So low to mid end at best. But those kind of units are basically 40% of the Steam hardware server GPUs. And this is where Nvidia will face a attack from Intel and AMD in APUs. So again, let's have a look at those APUs. So we know that AMD launched the 6000 series and it was really, really like basically raising the bar for what you can achieve in a thin light laptop. We can basically do gaming in a sense. If you play on 720p or 1080p low settings, you can do some kind of gaming. Um, then this year, they will probably work on uh, Strix Point uh, Mono, which is basically the successor to Phoenix that's launched this year. So probably this one will launch next year. And that's uh, estimated to be around a 3050. Again, low end, but a relatively new product 3050. And then we have the big one, the Strix Point Halo. This will be like, I don't know, roughly 47 Mark Q performance. 40 RDNA 3 compute units, sorry, 3.5 compute units, made on TSMC 3 or 4 nanometers, Zen 5 cores, yeah, efficient product. So, I mean, I just don't see how Nvidia will have the gaming uh, revenue from their GPUs, where there's uh, standalone gaming GPUs that would even defend this kind of numbers that they had recently. I mean, 3.6 billion. I think it's going to be difficult. And given that already even based on those kind of numbers, we saw that the company was still, yeah, the price to sales is a lot. If you look only on the gaming side, which has historically been basically 90%, 95% of the company's revenue. I think it's going to be a really, really important for Nvidia to actually get success at attacking these kind of Nvidia AI enterprises and Omniverse and automotive. If they don't do that, and if the AI thing turns out to be either of some sort of uh, not as good or not as much as everyone believed, or maybe it is, but the competition is just, you know, taking market share and fighting for the gross margin, then these numbers here has to justify the price of the company that is I mean, yeah, it is like what a trillion US dollar in market cap. That's going to be difficult. That's a difficult sell to me. So yeah, and Intel, you know, I mean, it's not only AMD attacking Nvidia now, it's also Intel. And Intel, in my opinion, are really getting into the, the, the last stage of all the problems. I believe they are still in there in the valley, but I, I think the bottom is very near. And Combined all this together, I believe it really represents a huge risk to the investor to invest in NVIDIA at this stage. So again, thank you for watching the video. We will follow this uh, whole AI thing a whole lot more in the future. And please make sure to like the video and subscribe. And I try to yeah just get better audio next time. And yeah, so hang in there. Thank you.